So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple just surprised us and dropped iPadOS 15 Beta 4 to all developers. So in this update, we got a big overhaul of Safari, which was a little bit unexpected because normally with the Beta 4 update, those are normally bug and performance enhancements versus actual tangible features and differences. So we're gonna go through that gamut because there was also a bunch of other things that were noticeable. But without further ado, let's figure out exactly what Apple did with iPadOS 15 Beta 4. Let's get it. Okay, so let's hop right into this everybody and the first thing we're going to open up is the actual photos app to see exactly how big this was so if we zoom in we're looking at about 1.28 gigabytes for this update and again we're on ipad os 15 developer beta 4. so the public developer should release in the next 12 to 24 hours so if you guys are part of the developer program give yourself about 2.5 to 3 gigs of space if you're going to update to make sure you have enough space to make sure that it updates at least correctly so i always like to give at least 2x the amount of space needed to actually get this update installed. And then if we get out of there, go into the settings, let's go up to the actual general, about, and see what firmware number we're on. So right now we are on 19A5307G. So I believe last time we were rocking the H at the very end, so we are going down. We did skip a bunch to go, I think we went from like V to H, and now we're just going H to G, so we're only going one letter back. So I think Apple has a few more betas up their sleeve. Again, my guess, I think it was around eight betas before we get the final release in mid to late September when the new iPhones come out. And that's when I think everybody's gonna be able to download iPadOS and iOS 15 and start using it normally. So let's get into some of these features. So the biggest one has to be inside of Safari. So let's open up Safari. You can see that Safari for the most part is pretty normal. This is, you know, the app developer kind of what's new. It's also very hard to read the release notes because they're very technical, but just so you guys know, that's what it is. But you can see that Safari looks pretty much the same, right? You have this plus button right here to add new tabs. You have everything right here. If you click on here, then you have the refresh, the microphone, click on here to also refresh. You can still pull down. But now what Apple did was if you get out of here, go into your settings, go into Safari, which is all the way down here, if you scroll down, we now have a whole new section right here. So you can see that we have the compact tabs bar or we can separate the tab in the URL bar. So this is what it defaults to. So if we go back to Safari, you can see that this is what we got used to with iPadOS 15. But if we go back into settings, click on the separate tab bar, then go back to Safari, you can see that the actual URL bar is actually on top of the actual tabs, which is not something that we had before. And what I think Apple is doing is, according to what I was reading, this is very similar to what Safari looks like on macOS Monterey or Monterey, whatever you guys want to call it. So I think they're trying to make it so it seems as close to that type of Safari as possible. Because again, Safari is a desktop class browser, meaning that you can pretty much run anything that you can on macOS, Windows, a Chrome OS. It should run normally as long as it's a web-based application. So I think Apple's just trying to get it as close to it as possible. But then some other things that you notice is you now have up here on the top right, first off, obviously the tabs are a little bit thinner, but then on the top right, you have this breakaway button so you can actually view all of your tabs at once or all of your pages at once. Press done and go back here. And then another thing that I wanna show you with Safari is that if you go back into settings, you can now choose after one day, one week, or one month to actually close all your tabs. So normally I like to keep it manual, but if you do want, you can actually set it. So if you have a bunch of tabs open and you, are the type of person that doesn't delete their tabs after they're done, which I am that kind of person, especially on my phone. You should see I probably have like 300 different Safari tabs open. But after a day or so, depending on what you choose, it'll get rid of those tabs, no questions asked, and then you have a clear dashboard or a clear tabs menu up here. But I'll be honest, I actually like the new interface of Safari, and apparently the iOS got a bunch of new Safari updates that make it a little bit easier and alleviates the pain of that URL, the floating URL bar and things like that. But overall, Safari is looking cleaner and cleaner. And then another thing that you can do now is actually long press on the URL bar and add bookmarks, add bookmarks in terms of tabs, and then also reload again. So there's like 17 different ways to reload a Safari page now. Another update that came about was actually around focus mode. So I have mine turned on, but what you can do now is actually share your focus mode with other people. So if we go into settings, you can go into the actual focus modes. So this is the one that I'm using. You can now actually share your focus mode and let people know exactly what you want shared. So normally, like if I'm in the middle of a phone call and somebody calls me, then I'll do the automatic text of, can I call you later? So you can do kind of the same thing and customize exactly what you want your focus mode to tell other people when you're in that focus mode. Another new one, which apparently was a big deal and something that a lot of people wanted was inside of shortcuts. Now shortcuts is something that I don't use too often aside from when I'm doing custom wallpapers and custom icons, but there is now a return to home screen action. So you can create a shortcut or do whatever you need to do and then just have a shortcut that returns you right to the home screen which apparently was something that people wanted and now it's there. 
A couple other things that were added were we do have a brand new widget. So if I hold down on the screen, let's customize, let's add the new podcast widget. So there's a new XL podcast widget that is kind of nice. So if we can add that in there and you can see that now we have a huge podcast one. So as you can see, that's a new widget that we got with iPadOS 15 beta 4. Also another thing that I might go unnoticed, which isn't really a feature, just something that, that's changed, is the new notification icon. So you can see that the badge icon for notifications is actually a little bit different than what it used to be. So that is a new notification icon. Nice, a nice little change from Apple, something different. We've had the same notification icon for a long time now. And then the last thing that we did notice is inside of widgets when you're creating a smart stack. So let's say like this right here is a stack for me. So as you can see, I have both my crypto and my stock portfolios on here. Honestly, we're getting killed on the stock market because yesterday was such a great day. But if you hold that down and press edit stack, we now have a new icon for a smart rotate, which is this right here. So basically it just rotates whenever it thinks it should rotate. I always leave that on because I kind of like it, but that's a new icon that they added. But overall, those are all the changes that I saw. The last thing I do want to touch on is this overall battery performance. So if we go to battery, Again, we have the low power mode, which is something that you guys pointed out, which I pointed out before, but I didn't point it out in the last video, but we got a low power mode with beta one. But if we go to the last 10 days, you can see we're doing two hours and 55 minutes of screen on time, 17 minutes of screen off time. So a day that used up a lot of power was this one right here. See four hours and 45 minutes with about 100%, with about 75% battery usage. So with a day like this, I could probably squeeze out to about seven hours. And then if we go to some day like this, so this was a Monday, four hours and 40 minutes with about 55 to 60% actual battery taken up. So on a day like this, probably could have gotten nine or 10 hours. So it's just a matter of how far we're gonna be able to push it. And then again, I always tell people, if you wanna see how your battery is doing, go on here and then toggle between these. Cause you can see that four hours and two minutes only took up 62% versus 33% with only 30 minutes, right? For NBA 2K. So those are just some things to notice when you're going through battery, but that's gonna do it for this view. Let's get out of here and go to the normal view. So that is pretty much gonna do for this video, everybody. Like we saw, Safari got a big overhaul and we're getting closer and closer to Safari on the iPad Pro, almost mimicking the desktop version of the new Mac OS Monterey, 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 whatever you guys wanna call it. I say Monterey Jack Cheese, so that's how I'm gonna say it. But it's starting to mimic that version of Safari and they're bringing that over to iPad OS. Now, I don't know if they're trying to mesh the two worlds together or make them work better supplementally, or if they're trying to make the iPad Pro almost replace Mac OS or replace a laptop from a almost from like a Chromebook standpoint So basically turning Safari into like this web version of Apple I think that could be in the future for iPad Pros and Safari on iPad Pros But outside of Safari we got you know the addition of the new podcast widget We got some other auxiliary features that were added and some differences that were changed But mostly it was there to fix a lot of bugs that were happening some issues that were happening with connectivity, with Bluetooth connectivity, and also there was an issue that I had with Beta 3 with external hard drive support. So outside of that, everything's been working well. Beta 4, again, it's only been like an hour or two since I've been using it, so I'm gonna hold off on my recommendation, but give it a couple days, and we'll have a follow-up video on iPadOS 15 Beta 4 and see how it's done, not only from a performance standpoint, but also from a battery standpoint, because that's the biggest thing. I'm trying to get this iPad to run eight hours of screen on time, and we're really not getting there yet. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out channel sponsor Paperlike. Also check out Tiny Rigs. They're doing some awesome stuff. But like I said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you.